In this video, I'll be going over some of the available Finstack CSS classes and how they work. And as we go along, I'll be sharing a few tips on how to utilize them to help customize and add some extra style to some of your graphics. So let's start off by going over the basics. A Finstack CSS class is basically a class or style that we have predefined inside of Finstack's core theme, allowing for our users to call upon that style on certain components and use them within their graphics. So let's use a button uh, as an example. If you go to our docs page and search for GB classes, you will find a doc containing several different available classes that you can use on different types of components. If we look at the button section, the first several classes offer us a nice themed look for our buttons. So let's go ahead and copy one of those and go back to Graphics Builder. If you select our component and look over the properties panel, you will notice a section available for you to type in a class. Go ahead and paste the copied class into that section and you will notice that the button immediately changes its style based on the class you typed in or pasted into the class's property section. Available classes can be found by simply right clicking on a component and going down to the style section. Here you will find a list of available styles. As soon as you select a new style from the right click menu, the component should instantly update its look with the new style. All you're basically doing by selecting a style from the right click menu is changing the class's property. Okay, so now let's take a look at the smart labels available classes. There's a lot of classes to cover here, so I'm going to cover just a few of them. The class you may recognize the most is the View-Mini class, which is the default class used on smart labels within a floor plan graphic. So let's say you've made your floor plan but need to add an additional label. Dragging the virtual point from the virtual point menu gives you the default smart label. This is where the class comes into play. All you need to do is type in the class, which is View-Mini, or utilize the right-click menu to select the View-Mini style. This gives it a nice transparent look and feel designed to help it stand out against the zone polys that are typically found within a floor plan graphic. Some of you may already know about the resize magic button which allows you to resize your smart labels text to small, medium, default, large or extra large sizes. All that button is really doing is just adding an additional class to the existing class on the selected label. So if we go in and type in the size we want we are essentially doing the same exact thing that the resize button does. The tools we provide simply make it easier for you to switch and apply the available classes to each component. Another really common component in class is the group component, which is used as a container. So let's go back to our original graphics page and switch the panel over to the components view and bring out a group component. By default, the group component is transparent. But by adding a view-container class to it, you get a nice clean container look that matches your user's theme. This is the same container that we use in many of our own models. You may recognize it in the overview boxes, or perhaps from the title menus that automatically get generated when each graphic is created. One perfect example uh, where I would utilize the view-container group is um, inside of a floor plan. To demonstrate, I will copy this group and switch over to the floor plan graphic we were just previously working on and paste it in there. Now, if you may notice uh, on the bottom right, I have a gradient legend which is just kind of floating there. So what I'd like to do is use this container to kind of use it as a background to that gradient and help it stand out a bit more. So now I can simply adjust the size of the box and use the right click menu to send it to the back of the layers list giving the gradient key a nice background and help making it look a bit more aesthetically pleasing. One of the greatest things about using these classes is that they each have been tailored to work with the multiple themes that are available. For example, if I log in with a different user that is set up to use a dark theme and I go to view the same exact graphic, you'll notice that everything switches to match the selected theme automatically. Okay, so now let's go over some of the classes available to the label component. To start this off, go ahead and bring out a label, right click on it, go down to the style section, and select the default option. This is the most commonly used class, especially amongst our smart label models. And if you look over at the classes property, you'll see that the class is called view-superman-value. Another thing you can do to a label through classes is change the shape of it. So if you go to the right click style menu, you will find a section called shapes which allows you to choose between round and square. 
By selecting round, you can see that a round class was added to the existing view-superman-value class. The round class works really well when paired or used with an icon. To find a list of available icon classes, all you need to do is open the file assets section in your right menu and then click on the list of icons option at the very top. This will open up a new tab that provides you with an entire list of available icons. Each section has its own prefix that needs to be combined with the individual icons class. So for example, let's say we wanted something from the first section. The prefix here is icon and a dash. And as for the icon, let's go with the arrow pointing to the left. So the class in total would be icon-arrow-left. Okay, so let's switch back to the graphic view now and adjust our labels so that it's an even circle. Once your label is adjusted, go ahead and add the class to that label, which in our case is icon-arrow-left. And you'll notice that as soon as you type in the class, the icon should appear within the label. You can enlarge the icon by adjusting the font size. I have found that these arrow icons are really useful for showing the flow on central plant styled graphics. So for example, let's take this arrow icon and paste it into a chiller graphic. All we need to do is switch the arrows class to change the direction that it's pointing in. Another thing I like to do is add a nice little border to the icon to help it stand out a little more against the piping. Once you have one arrow looking the way you want, you can then just copy and paste the rest of the arrows and adjust the classes to change the direction and color of the icon. Okay, so that's just the basic rundown on how these classes work and hopefully the few examples I provided could help spark your imagination and inspire you to utilize these classes in some of your own graphics. There are obviously a huge amount of classes that I do not cover in this video so if you run into any that you're not sure of or if you want some suggestions or if you have any questions on the available classes please feel free to contact us at support at j2inn.com. We'd be more than happy to help. Thanks for watching.